Hello everyone. So today we are going to work on how to determine key conflicts when we try to reassign. For example, if I try to assign the same key space for the move forward here, see now this became a space and this became snap and it's also became red to highlight that now this is unassigned. So if I assign something else here, something like this, now this becomes the regular color. So in the same way, if I try to assign A here, this becomes none and yeah, so on and so forth. So that's how it works. So this is what we are going to work on today. Let me reset. So now everything is back in the original uh, e-assignments. So this is what we are going to work on today. How to determine key, key assignment conflicts and how to show that in the UI. So before we get started, let me remind you that you can download the project files of this project and all of the thousands of projects I have done in my channel uh, is available for download here in my Patreon page and also this is the full playlist of this series. Everything is explained and implemented from scratch. I leave the links to everything in description below. And now let's get back to today's episode. Okay, so right now, here, if I go to my control settings and uh, let me reset. And here, this is W and jump is a space. If I assign a space to move forward instead of W, now both of these inputs have the same input, key bind, bound to the action, but it's not complaining. So what I want to do is this should be unassigned if I assign the same key to another input. So we need to check for conflicts, right? So to do that, let me open my controls options. And here, uh, this is where I update key mapping. Now, after updating the key mapping here, I need to have another function to check for complex and that function also should know should get these two parameters mapping name and the new key so I'll do a reroute node like this and collapse this to a function so I can easily create a function with all the inputs I need so I'll call it check key conflicts and this input um, let's call it map name and the input to key or rather new key okay see now easily we have the function so now to check the mappings we can actually use this enhanced input sys player subsystem and from that get enhanced input user settings and get active key profile and get player mapping rows okay now yeah let's do that and let's run a orange look now here we need to make sure that we are not checking the same mapping so we need to make sure this is not equal to the mapping name so so we will not be by mistake mark the current mapping the existing mapping that we already have as unassigned the existing mapping that I'm already trying to change as I'm assigned. Okay, so this should be false. And uh, if this is not the case, now from this, I can break, get, so, to make sure that this does have assignments mappings otherwise we would get an error and 
this is true, then we can get the first element and drag this. Now we can check if the current key is equal to this new key. So current key equals new key. If this is true, that means we have a conflict. So here is the conflict. This true. So how do we mark something as a conflict? For that, we need to get a reference to the option key. Option key means this widget that shows the name of the input and the key. That option key widget and mark it as unassigned. But right now, I don't keep a reference. So maybe it's time that when I initialize these uh, key widgets, maybe let's store a reference. So like this, I'll add a variable. I'll call it option keys and change the type to name and then change this into a map so the other variable I'll choose uh, option key WVP option key compile now option keys add Now the name is this. The widget is this. Right. Uh, and one more thing. When I clear children, when I want to reinitialize, I need to make sure that I clear this option key, key variable as well. Right now, here I have the mapping name. I can access it from here, and we can find option key. Option key find using this mapping name. So this map key, this one, not the input mapping. Name. And then so this one we need to mark as unassigned, but I don't have a function to a way to make it unassigned right now. So let's go to option key and let's add a, way, a new function. Uh, what should we call it? Set on side. Okay, so I'll get the WVP key button and update key to not. So I'll call this set unassigned function here. And we need to make sure we have to have an element with the same name. All right, I think that's all I need to do for now. Let's check controls. Now, this is both space, so let me reset. And then if I try to assign space now, see this became now, so that's exactly what I wanted. Also, maybe we should have some change into background as well. So this is 
ね。Here. Let me wrap this with the board. Here. I'll set it this way. It have anything. And then border. I'll make it take the entire space. I set the brush color. To red with some transparency like this. Okay, now by default, I'll make this. This is visible. Okay, here, when I update the key, if the key is equal to none then i need to make that background appear i need to have this red so i'll make this a variable order red let's call it no order unassigned whatever you want to call it and I'll set visibility of this based on this condition. I'll select based on this condition. And if it is true, visible, otherwise hidden. Uh, Wait, this might be a problem. This might hide the child, children's as well. Let's see. Nothing is visible. No, this is not going to work. This is going to affect child elements as well. So, let me delete that and revert this. Sweet. Child. Okay. So let's do this. Let's change the color. Color of this text. And I'll have two variables for that. So basically, what I want to do is this set city key name, set color, and opacity. And I need to select this based on this value. If it is true, I need to have one color. If it is false, I need to keep the original color. So let's promote this to a variable. Let's call it valid key color. And no, actually, Yes, find color that makes more sense. And this we unassigned color. Okay, now unassigned color, I'll make it red like this, and the assigned color. I will make this white, but we need to make sure that we use the default value that is coming from this. So what we can do is here in the pre-construct, I can access the key name, yeah, this one, and get style. So this is a class reference, get defaults, get class defaults. And here we have the color. I'll set that color into this assigned color. Oh, that's a select color. This is a linear color.
So if I split this, now I can say it. Okay, so here we will have the original, whatever the original color we already have in the in the variable. And that's all. Yeah, that's all. Now let's check. That is controls. So reset. Try to assign the same one. See, now this became red and also now. So if I try some other key, now it's on the back in the original color. It's not red anymore. So exactly in the way I need. If I stop and go back, yeah, things are in the same way that I wanted it to be. All right, so that's all I want to do in this episode. And thanks for watching. As always, updated project files will be available for download here in the Patreon page. Link would be in the description below. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you in another episode. Goodbye.